Welcome to episode 116 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to share how to create a morning routine that gets you energized to teach. Visit truthforteachers.com to get a printable PDF version of the transcript for this episode and a brainstorming sheet to help you plan out your ideal morning. So Truth For Teachers is now back for season seven, and I'm really excited to kick things off with a focus on new habits for the new year. Now, I normally begin the podcast season with a super deep and heavy topic because I've been ruminating on the state of education for a few months with no podcast outlet to express myself. And I feel like I'm just going to burst if I don't share whatever rant has been building up in my head. And if you like those very passionate, very deep episodes, no worries, I will not disappoint this season. I've got that coming for you next week, actually. I'm on a new mission about shifting school culture. You're going to hear all about that and how I'm hoping you'll participate in this mission too. So that will be coming next week in episode 117. But I wanted to sort of ease into this new season first by talking about something else that I'm really passionate about right now, which is the mindset of high performers and daily habits that create more enjoyment and effectiveness. So specifically, we're going to look at ways to start your morning right. Your morning sets the tone for the entire day. In many ways, your relationships and interactions with students, your productivity, Every part of your day really is impacted by the way that your day begins. If you want to be your best self in the coming year, if you have goals for getting healthier or having more balance or whatever it is that you're wanting to accomplish or prioritize, I promise you that thinking about how you structure your morning routines is one of the most powerful ways to help you accomplish those goals. And the good news is it's also one of the easiest ways to get yourself some positive forward momentum toward those goals. Let me explain. There's a lot of talk about the importance of morning routines amongst entrepreneurs, because when you're running your own business, you don't have anyone to create a schedule for you. So it's very easy to waste time and to fall into bad habits. So this is something that I have to be very aware of myself. And I've done a lot of research into this and given a lot of thought to this topic. However, it's not something that I commonly hear discussed in teaching circles. I think for most educators, having to be at school so early means that the morning routine is basically just getting yourself and your family out the door as quickly as possible and making sure that you're in that classroom before your students are lined up outside the door waiting for you. So I'm going to walk you through the steps for planning your morning routine with more intentionality. I'm going to explain everything here in this episode, and then if you want a printable version, so a PDF that you can download and keep, as well as a brainstorming sheet that will help you plan out your morning, just go to truthforteachers.com and click on episode 116. You can also just click the link that's in the show notes. So hit the information button for this episode in your podcast player, and you can click right through and you'll be able to download that. As a teacher, I had to be at work at 7.30 in the morning, and the kids came in the door at 7.45. So I understand that pressure of feeling like you don't have even a minute to yourself before the day is in full swing. I really had to learn the hard way about the importance of morning routines for teachers. By nature, I am not a morning person. I think I've sort of become a morning person as I get older, and I actually don't mind waking up early at this point. I actually like to do it now. I feel like I do my best thinking, my best work first thing in the morning at this point. But that was definitely not the case when I was in my 20s, or even really my early 30s. I would set my alarm for the latest possible time, and then I would rush around like a mad woman trying to make sure that I wasn't late. So I was teaching in Fort Lauderdale um, at the time of the story that I'm about to tell you. And I had a pretty short commute at that point, but I had to cross over train tracks and a drawbridge to get to my school. So if a train came or that drawbridge was raised, it threw me behind by at least five minutes. And I didn't have five minutes to spare. So any unexpected interruption or any sort of disruption became a big problem. Because I left myself with no margin and no buffer time, something as simple as a train crossing could ruin my whole morning. 
And even without the train, I only had a couple of minutes to myself to breathe before the kids came in. Just a few minutes to prepare for all that hustle and bustle that a room full of third graders brings to a room first thing in the morning. I would still be half asleep myself and it would take me a good 30, 45 minutes into my first lesson before I would feel like my head was really in the game. So after about the 11 billionth time of sliding in the school doors just before that teacher first bell rang, I finally decided I was going to change my morning routine and I began setting my alarm for 15 minutes earlier. That would allow me to leave the house five minutes earlier, which means that I didn't have to stress if there was a problem on the roadway, and I could use the other 10 minutes to do something that would put me in the right mindset. So I started sitting out on my apartment balcony in the mornings and either reading something that would put me in the right headspace, maybe reading the Bible or reading an uplifting book or listening to calming music and just sort of looking out over the palm trees while I geared up for the day mentally. I also had a giant mug of coffee, so the caffeine would kick in before I arrived at school instead of after. When I tell you that having that 10 minutes to myself in the morning, 10 minutes to just sit without anyone calling my name, without anyone asking me for anything, 10 minutes to breathe, 10 minutes to mentally prepare for the day and drink some coffee. When I tell you that made the biggest difference in my mood and my mindset and my effectiveness as a teacher, I am not exaggerating. Even my colleagues noticed. The teacher next door was like, Angela, you have so much more energy lately. You used to walk into schools sort of dragging and not wanting to talk to anyone until after 9 a.m. What changed? Being intentional about how I started my day and creating this motivating morning routine was the simplest thing that I ever did to improve my energy level and to improve my attitude toward teaching. Having an extra 15 minutes to sleep would not have made that same difference. I'm certain of it. It was completely worth it for me to get up a few minutes earlier and make sure my head's in the game. So I want to encourage you to create a morning routine that works for you, no matter how much you feel like you are not a morning person, and no matter how early you're already having to get up. You might have children or other family members who get up at the crack of dawn, and having to be up before them could be a real challenge for you. I'm not saying this is going to be easy, necessarily. I'm saying it's going to be worth it. Figure out if there is a way that you could wake up even five minutes earlier, to give yourself time to mentally prepare for the day. So once you've made this commitment to set your alarm a couple minutes earlier to ensure that you have that time for yourself, set your intent about how you want to use that time. What does a smooth, productive morning look like to you? How would you like to begin your morning in an ideal situation? Now, I'm not talking about waking up on a beautiful island somewhere where you don't have to work. I'm talking about in your regular life, on a regular workday. What would be the most pleasant, productive way to begin your regular routines? Visualizing a smooth day might sound kind of silly, kind of woo-woo, but it really does make a big difference because it allows you to set your intentions. If you don't know what you're working toward, you'll never get it. So once you daydream a little bit about how you want things to flow in your day and what an ideal morning would look like for you, then you can actually plan the steps that will help make that vision a reality. A smooth morning is going to look different for each individual teacher. So decide what that means for you. Now, it's important here to make sure that you are choosing your first thoughts of the day wisely. Don't start your day by running through this mental to-do list and making yourself anxious before you even get out of bed. I used to do this and I replaced that habit by thinking about all the successes from the day before. So what awesome things happened yesterday in your classroom that laid the foundation for the awesome things that are going to happen today? That's what you wanna think about when you wake up in the morning. I try to be present in those early morning minutes when I'm first waking up, rather than allowing my mind to rush ahead to all the things that I need to do. That can create overwhelm before I've even gotten out of bed. So practice choosing your thoughts when you first wake up. You don't have to think every thought that pops into your mind. Dismiss those anxious thoughts and replace them with thoughts about what's going well. Begin your day by appreciating your life. Go through a mental list of some things that you're grateful for. 
This will get you in a more positive mindset, even if you feel tired, and even if you haven't woken up in a good mood. Your thoughts create your moods. So choose to replace those negative thoughts that arise when you wake up with thoughts that are more energizing and more motivating. It's also important to begin your day with a habit that makes you feel balanced and happy. And generally, that means not checking your phone. A lot of us are in the habit of reaching for our phones the moment we wake up. But checking email or just mindlessly scrolling through a social media feed means that you're likely to see something that makes you angry or sad or annoyed or move to action. And none of those feelings are going to help you start off your day on the right foot and have a productive day. The beginning of your day is not a time when you can afford to get sucked into an internet black hole. Your entire morning will feel rushed if you waste 15 minutes reading a juicy bit of gossip or getting into an internet argument on someone's political post before you even get out of bed. And checking your email while you're still laying in bed, well, that will remind you of all the things that you need to do at a time when you're not supposed to be doing them. You're either going to read the email and try to respond immediately, even though you know you need to get your day started and begin that motivating morning routine, or you'll leave the messages unanswered and that will create anxiety and scattered focus and this mounting mental to-do list. So don't check email and social media first thing. What you want to do is choose a new wake up habit that makes you feel balanced and happy. Do that habit first. And then you can check on your phone or turn on the television or otherwise expose yourself to all of these outside ideas and people. I like reading in bed for just a couple of minutes in the morning rather than just jumping right up. But I feel better if I read a book or an ebook that is inspiring and motivating. So this careful selection about my first media input of the day is important. It sets the tone for the day. It helps establish my mood and it gets me excited to accomplish my goals. Now, you don't have to have a perfect morning routine planned. Just try something out for a couple of days. Maybe it will be an invigorating walk around your neighborhood or eating just a quick breakfast in a quiet spot of your house that has a pretty view. Maybe it will be meditating for a couple minutes or sitting with a cup of coffee and looking at your to-do list and mentally preparing for the days ahead or for the tasks ahead. Any of those options is going to feel like a luxury if you're used to feeling frazzled in the morning. So choose whatever appeals to you personally and give yourself the freedom to be flexible. Your morning routine might differ according to the days of the week and what you have planned that day. Or you might try something that works well for a week or two and then you find yourself sort of dreading it and not wanting to do it anymore. Be prepared to switch things up and look for new options that feel nourishing to your soul and that really help you get in that right headspace for the day. Once you've established your morning routine and you've started thinking about what you're thinking about first thing in the morning, really paying attention to starting things off on the right foot, it's important to also make sure that you're getting to school early enough that you can work undisturbed. Given the choice between going to school early or staying late, I would pick the former anytime, even though I had to train myself to be a morning person. And that's because in the afternoons, I'm far more likely to let exhaustion get the best of me, or I'd get sucked into just hanging out with my coworkers and chit-chatting. So after a few months of setting my alarm 15 minutes earlier, I finally got the courage to move my alarm clock up an entire hour. And that gave me time to ease into my school day the way that I really wanted to. My stress level decreased significantly because now an impromptu mini conference with a colleague in the hallway wouldn't any longer throw me hopelessly behind time. And in turn, I noticed a big change in the level of patience and the level of productivity that I had during the school day. So if your schedule will allow it even just one day a week, I encourage you to consider arriving at school just a little bit earlier so that you have some undisturbed time to think and plan and prepare for your day. You can create a pleasant morning ritual in your classroom that will help you transition into work mode. Use your time before the first bell to do things that get you excited about your day. Don't start off by writing a behavioral referral from the day before and start bringing up all those negative emotions from something bad that happened yesterday. Do things first thing in the morning at school that get you excited. Figure out a routine that you enjoy, something that gets you in the mindset for teaching. 
I had a lot of colorful decorative lamps in my classroom. I was sort of addicted to those cheap little colorful lamps from Ikea. <laughs> so I had them all over my room. And I could have assigned a student the job of switching them all on in the morning. But I enjoyed walking around my classroom each morning with the overhead light still off and just slowly turning on one lamp at a time and look at the space around the lamp. And I would picture the learning that would take place there later in the day and the successes that my students would have. I'd then turn on music that calmed me if I was anxious or that energized me if I was tired. I'd sit at my desk with a second cup of coffee and something simple like yogurt for breakfast. As you know, a quiet moment to sit down at your desk in an empty classroom and listening to relaxing music with a cup of coffee, that's a huge luxury for a teacher. So this ritual that only took a couple minutes was a very special way to begin the day. As I sipped my coffee and I ate, I went through my lesson plans for the day and made sure that all the materials were organized and accessible. Sometimes I would alter the plans according to my mood. I'd rearrange the lessons a little bit or incorporate a different activity that better suited my energy level or the weather or a change in our daily schedule that was beyond my control. This was my last chance to deeply consider my students' needs and to reflect on my practice before I'd have to start thinking on my feet again. Once my plans were in place and my coffee was finished, I'd turn off the music and turn on the TV. It was tuned to the school's morning announcements channel. So the school played kid-friendly, upbeat music on the channel until announcements started. So listening to that was sort of the start of my transition into all of the activity that would be beginning shortly. I do miscellaneous tasks around the classroom, just sort of straightening things up, making last minute changes to the warm up activity and that sort of thing. Now, this part might just be an Angela problem, I don't know. But as an introvert, and as a lover of peace and quiet, having the classroom instantly transform from this calm oasis into a bustling, noisy room full of children would often feel a bit jarring. And I'm not going to lie, there were a lot of days when I dreaded hearing that first bell ring because I knew it meant I was going to have to kick my energy level into high gear as if it were a light switch. And my energy level just doesn't turn on that quickly. So I found that standing in the doorway and welcoming kids into the classroom helped me make that transition a little bit more easily. And it might be a good solution for you too. It's sort of a chance to chat briefly with the teachers next door or across the hall That way, you don't have to chit-chat during your planning time. And it's also a way for you to greet students as they enter the classroom. So I tried to create a habit of connecting with each student just very briefly. I would read their facial expressions, read their body language, and try to get an idea of what kind of energy they were bringing into the classroom that day and talk about anything that they needed to discuss. I think it's obvious that this sort of routine is beneficial for students, but if you haven't thought about how it can also be helpful for you as the teacher to help you start the day off on the right foot, consider what kind of routine for welcoming kids into the classroom would help you feel more connected to the kids and more prepared to be on for the day. Another important component of sort of starting your day off on the right foot like this is to teach students some warm up or bell work routines that they can complete independently. I spent a great deal of time in August teaching students how to enter the room quietly, how to take care of their own arrival tasks like pencil sharpening, getting a drink of water and that sort of thing, and then teaching them how to begin that morning warm up activity. So this is what freed me to remain by the doorway and continue greeting their classmates as each one arrived because I knew the rest of the class would be working independently on something that was meaningful to them. Having that morning um, warm-up routine also meant that I wasn't responsible for teaching from the moment that the kids entered the room. Because I had students always follow that same morning routine, I was able to handle those last-minute emergencies, bus incidents, tardies, all that sort of thing, without throwing the rest of the class off schedule. I recommend keeping the assignments simple and fairly predictable so that students can do them independently. Self-selected reading is a great way to begin the day, and it sort of lets kids ease into the day too, because if you have a hard time transitioning into work mode, you know that the kids have a hard time too. A lot of them do. So self-selected reading is a good choice, but whatever you choose, write the directions in a consistent place that's easy for every student to see. I wrote mine in red marker, so whenever students entered the classroom, they knew to look at the top left-hand corner of the board for the red writing that says warm up. 
The warm up might take between usually five and 15 minutes, depending on the type of task and also depending on how long it takes students to trickle into your room in the morning. It might also depend on how much time you need before the lesson begins. You can easily extend the warm up activity to buy yourself a couple of extra minutes if there's some unexpected demand on your time, and the students will never know the difference. The warm up is what allows you to wait to begin instruction until you are completely ready and you're completely present in the moment. So to recap the steps here, you want to set your alarm five to 15 minutes earlier to give yourself a few minutes. That way you have some time to yourself before the demands of the day begin. Once you're used to that routine, you can slowly lengthen that amount of time if you want to stretch it up to an hour or so to give yourself even more time to prepare. Set your intent. Think about how you want your day to flow. Envision yourself having a smooth, productive day. Choose your first thoughts of the day wisely. Don't just think any thought that comes into your head. Be intentional about thinking positive thoughts about the successes that you had the day before in the classroom and how those lay the foundation for the awesome things that are going to happen today. Begin your day by appreciating your life and being positive. Then think about a habit that's going to make you feel balanced and happy, and it's probably not going to be checking your phone. You want to train yourself to do this new habit that makes you feel good first and then check your phone or turn on the television or whatever your normal morning routine is. Try out a new habit or routine for early morning and plan to tweak it over time. You don't have to do the same thing forevermore. Just find something that works for you right now and then be prepared for changing it as your family's demands change, as your things in your home change, as your moods change. You can adapt this over time. Get to school early when you can work undisturbed and create a pleasant morning ritual in your classroom that will help you transition into work mode. Stand in the doorway while students are entering the room and teach students a warm up or bell work routine that they can complete independently. That way you can be present there and you can slowly transition into the day and begin instruction when you're ready. Now, before I give you a summary and I share the takeaway truth for the week ahead, I want to remind you that if you want that printable version of the ideas that I've shared in this episode, just go to truthforteachers.com and click on episode 116. I'm also providing that brainstorming sheet that will help you plan out your ideal morning. So go to truthforteachers.com or click the link that's in the show notes for this episode. Just hit that information button in your podcast player and you can click right through. I've given you a lot of different elements here to consider, but I hope you can see the common thread among them is intentionality. Don't just run with whatever thoughts you wake up with or assume that if you wake up in a bad mood, you're just going to have a bad day and there's nothing you can do about it. You can choose your thoughts and you can choose your habits. Be intentional about creating a morning routine that sets you and your students up for success. Your takeaway truth for the week ahead is this. You'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of success is found in your daily routine. Have a great week. You can do this. And remember, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Want more than just a weekly podcast episode from me? I'd love to also send you a weekly message of encouragement via email. I'll reach out each Sunday evening with a short message that's designed to help you feel more prepared and inspired and motivated for the week ahead. It's not a newsletter or a bunch of announcements. This goes out to over 85,000 educators. So I put just as much thought into crafting this weekly written message to my email list as I do into crafting my podcast episodes. And it's entirely unique content that you won't find anywhere else online. Just go to the cornerstoneforteachers.com slash subscribe and you can sign up. That's the cornerstoneforteachers.com slash subscribe.